It is the breaking news alert many of you have received on your phone in the last hour. The search on for an escaped prisoner in Louisville. Take a good look at this man. He is 31 year old Norman Wolf. He was able to escape from police custody in the area of I-71 in the Snyder earlier this morning where SWAT teams and police agencies have dispersed. Alexis Jones and her photojournalist Elijah McKenzie are at the Kentucky Country Day School right now. Alexis, what are you seeing? Well, Brooke, right now we're seeing heavy police presence throughout the area. Officials say that the school is on a soft lockdown until police can locate an escaped inmate. Police say that they are looking for 31 year old Norman K. Wolf. Wolf is a convicted felon who is charged with burglary and fleeing and invading police. Kentucky Country Day School officials say everyone on campus is safe and cooperating and awaiting an all clear message from law enforcement. This is a very popular location here. The product shops are here. They're there's a Kroger over here, and but right now all of those shops and the Kroger are on high alert. Police say that they are asking everyone to stay away from I-71 and I-265. Keep watching WHS 11 throughout the day. We will have more information from police once it is released. In Louisville, Alexis Jones, WHS 11 on your side. Okay, and we did mention Kentucky Country Day, but another addition here to schools on that list. Look at your screen. These schools have suspended outdoor activities until Wolf is caught. Elementary schools include Norton Commons, Norton, Bowen, Chansey, Wilder, Zachary Taylor, Cameron, and Westport Middle, along with Ballard High. We've also been told St. Mary Academy Catholic School is also taking precautions. Again, we will be monitoring this situation and provide those updates on air on our app and on our website at whas11.com. Right now, LMPD is asking for your help in locating a suspect who struck a victim on the back with a hatchet and then fled the scene. Police say this colored Chrysler with uh, 300, this Chrysler 300, I should say, with large gold rims and bark tent with a temporary tag. The suspect is facing charges of assault and first degree burglary. If you have any information, you should call 574-LMPD. New court documents reveal the Louisville gunman behind the mass shooting at Old National Bank last month planned that attack in advance. This week, we are learning about what detectives discovered on the 25 year old's phone and social media accounts. Our Connor Stephan took those documents to a former prosecutor and local attorney for more insight into what they reveal about the shooter and his plans. Four separate search warrants revealing some of the steps Connor Sturgeon took to prepare for what happened April 10th at Old National Bank. But what jumps out at me is this investigation is a little bit more expansive. LMPD issued warrants to Apple, Google, AT&T, and Snapchat for data from Sturgeon's iPhone. The phone found in Sturgeon's pocket after an LMPD officer shot and killed him. He had live streamed the shooting on Instagram. In the documents, detectives refer to finding messages and notes outlining plans about how to conduct the criminal activities and a manifesto found at Sturgeon's home, though the warrants offered little to no insight into the contents of it. It is a key finding. The, the manifesto may not be released as rapidly as some of this other information is released. Carl Price is a practicing attorney with more than 30 years of experience. He's not involved in this case. What is your reaction to what has been discovered in these search warrants? What stuck out to me was the word the targets. You know, targets that in law enforcement, that means that we've got our, our eye potentially on someone else. Price, who is also a former prosecutor in Louisville, says this is typical of investigations into mass shooters. It raises an eyebrow that something or somebody got to them and influenced them. Sturgeon's battle with mental health is another well-documented finding. The warrants refer to an interview detectives conducted with Sturgeon's parents where it was noted his mental health disorders may have played a part during this criminal act. These claims are backed by mental health texts found on Sturgeon's phone to his girlfriend at the time. In Louisville, Connor Steffen, WHAS 11, on your side. Price also suggests the findings in this criminal investigation will help build strong civil court cases. He expects those to be filed fairly soon. Kentucky State Police continue to investigate a false report that led to several lockdowns in downtown Frankfurt after reports of a man with a gun. 
This happened around 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Police say they got a call about a gunman inside that five-story Kentucky Transportation Cabinet building, not far from the state capitol. These are photos from people at the scene surrounded by heavy police presence with help from Frankfort Police, the Sheriff's County, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office, and U.S. Marshals. They made a complete sweep of the building. Around 5 p.m., troopers say they cleared it and no shots were ever fired nor injuries reported. The Indiana Ooh. Supreme Court just upheld the life sentence of a man convicted of murder and cannibalism for his ex-girlfriend. Joseph Oberhansley was convicted in 2020 of murder and burglary in the 2014 slaying of Tammy Jo Blanton. The Clark County judge sentenced him to life in prison without parole based on the jury's recommendation. However, Oberhansley's attorney argued that sentence was not appropriate because he suffers from a profound mental health disorder that was not taken into consideration. However, in that Supreme Court's opinion, it said the jury did weigh those facts in its determination. Shively police clarifying why they have yet to release any more information about what happened that day of the deadly shooting at the Shively Animal Clinic. The department said its ultimate desire is for the facts to be reviewed in an accurate manner. We always strive to balance public transportation. Uh public transparency while maintaining the integrity of the investigation. Earlier this week, police said the shooting may have been in self-defense, but the shooter never publicly identified. The Shively Police Department said it is still interviewing witnesses. The visitation for the employee killed at that clinic, 21-year-old Trent Taylor, is set for later today. It's happening from 4 to 8 this evening. It's at the Coots Funeral Home in Jeffersonville, Indiana. His funeral is tomorrow morning at 11. We are shining a light on the life-saving work at UofL. Last year alone, the Trauma Center provided care for more than 3,600 patients. Well, now it's teamed up with trauma survivors for this, an exhibit at the Speed Art Museum, giving them a platform to share their stories in hopes of helping others. Our Taylor Woods takes us there. July 15th, 2022, um, I was shot point blank in the face. A day that is so hard to forget. The grease on the stove, I was going to fry some food, caught fire. These are just two of the 16 trauma survivors that experienced life-saving treatment at UofL Hospital. Olivia, a gunshot survivor, can still remember the last conversation when she stopped at the Stop and Go gas station on West Oak Street for chips and a drink. Just give me my phone, there's location on that. You don't want to be tracked. I don't want anything coming back on me. And in a matter of seconds, he pulled up the gun and shot me in the face. For Rochelle, her daughter grabbed the burning pot off the stove. Rochelle opened the door and the air hit it. That's when her life changed. Caused an explosion and burned my entire left side and I have wrapped around burns on my right side and my daughter got flash burns on her face. U of L helped them through their recovery and tonight their photos are showcased in an exhibit along with these decorated hearts that represent survivors and those who did not make it. Each string represents a different type of bond and connection between each of our survivors. The man behind the lens who took these photos say it's been incredible to capture their story. I mean, it's, it's, it's changed me. Like, I think it's life changed. Like, all their stories and just hearing them all together. In Louisville, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 on your side. UofL Health told us the survivors were chosen and identified by members of the J. David Richardson Trauma Center.